Well, I think it pr probably takes me two hours to get up in the morning. Um, um, what else? Um, basically, when I'm actually doing doing the the getting up, that reminds me of what I need to say. But just sitting here. I can't think of anything because I'm not, not doing anything. But as soon as I start to do something, that'll be, that'll remind me. I mean, my stroke, uh, in, in July 2013, my brain was entirely empty. And it was actually a relief. I thought, oh my God. And I used to say it was a holiday because it was such a relief, just having nothing going on. So, so for six months I just exist, well, for four months in rehab, I just existed and they did uh, physiotherapy and things and uh, voice, voice therapy speech therapy, speech therapy, and uh, so I just existed in Northwick Park for three and a half months, and I thought, oh well, it's just a holiday, and then I'll be entirely normal after six months, but of course I wasn't entirely normal, and it was only when I got home and found that, I mean, well, and the, the kids were 12, 10 and 6, so, and then, then I was just on my own, you know, for, uh, we, we were at the end of the cul-de-sac, and I, I found, you know, uh, Katie would go out and take the kids to school, well, James would go out at 7.30 and get the train, uh, Alex and Luke would go at 8.30, and as often as not, she wouldn't. She'd go. She'd stay out, uh, and that was it, until they came back at three thirty or four or something. So I, I it was just, oh my god, what what am I going to do? Simply from eight thirty till four, every day, because I, I I couldn't work. I could I could basically read a bit, but after five pages and my attention tends to wander. So, I, and, and at the time, I, 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 because I was depressed, I couldn't listen to music because, well, well also, I could, I could listen to a record, but if I, I mean, how to fill eight hours every day. And that's what's interesting now, because now I'm not depressed. I just somehow manage. I mean, every day I say, okay, uh, well, I, I, I do this list every day of what I've got to do that day and um, I'll go to the post office and come back and but it just passes because that's what's changed. Uh, I say I, I don't beat myself up about not doing work. And anyway, I, I feel now when I was 16, I basically didn't didn't have a clue about work and I was I basically thought just being was fine and listening to records and watching movies and and now I'm just back at that stage I mean uh, and w why I, I thought I I needed to write screenplays for 20 years which was so important to me before the stroke now it's, it's sort of like oh well, it wasn't a very satisfying way to spend my life. And, um, yeah. I mean, I thought I would, the great thing about being a writer was that I could go on writing into my 80s or 90s. And I, I saw all these people who were screenwriters like Ronald Harwood and Andrew Davis, and they just keep going and they're 70 or 75 or 80 and they still do a movie or a TV series and David Hare, you know, 
nobody ever says, oh, I'm going to retire as a writer, because what would they do, you know? But that was taken away from me, so that was that took some getting used to. Yes, but also it's it's kind of coming back because I do the blog, um, so I write half a paragraph about about whatever, and afterwards I I don't know what I've written about. I don't understand it but I'm getting used to it. After five years, I basically don't know what it was like before the stroke. So th this is the new normal. The strange thing is that I'm happier now than I was pre-stroke. Now, why that is, I don't really know, but I think it's to do with living each day just for the day.